biggest complaint I get whenever I review a MacBook Air or Pro or even like a Dell XPS 13 is the fact that you can't upgrade anything. You can't upgrade the RAM. It's soldered onto the motherboard. You're stuck with the same drive. You can't upgrade it. It's soldered onto the motherboard. And over the years, we've been making our way to buying a laptop where you just can't upgrade anything at all. Not so much in the gaming laptop market, but more so in the thin and lights that a lot of people buy for back to school or even for working from home. Now there's a company called Framework who released a laptop that allows you to upgrade everything. And when I mean everything, I mean everything from the CPU to the GPU to the display to even the ports. You get to choose exactly what you wanna buy for the laptop and you can swap it out and upgrade it to something else down the road. The cool thing though, is that they were able to do this in a thin and light package. Usually when I think modularity, I think of clunky laptops. I think of big laptops getting in the way, making it heavier, not wanting to carry around. But the framework is actually just as light as a MacBook Air. And that to me is kind of special. Now this is what the box looks like. This is basically the review unit sample they sent out to me, but you can go on their website and you can purchase a do it yourself kit, which comes with like bare bones. And then you can pick the parts you want, or you can start off with like an i5 11th gen processor from Intel. And then, you know, with 256 gigabytes of storage and then add other stuff on that you need or upgrade in the future. Now the laptop is gonna be in this box. This is the framework logo, which is a cog wheel. And then on the right side over here, you have a power adapter, which is going to be USB type C. So even if you don't need this specific adapter, you can use any USB type C adapter to charge it. This one happens to be 50 Watts. So that's more than enough juice to keep this thing going. And the coolest thing is this. I mean, come on, look at this. Like these are all modular. You, you slide these into the laptop and you get to choose the ports you want on it. Now inside the box, you have the framework laptop. You have the logo in the middle. It's an aluminum build. It feels super premium. It's under three pounds, so it's very light. The bottom, you have two speakers, your grill, and then of course, four expansion slots that allow you to place whatever cards, ports you want inside of here. Now. This is a very thin laptop. It's not super thick, so I feel like this sort of design is not gonna go stale over the next five years. So I think that's pretty cool. The only thing you cannot change on this laptop is the headphone jack. Like this comes standard, it's not negotiable it's gonna be on your laptop no matter what. The other cool thing is that if you don't have the proper utensils to get inside your laptop, they include a T5 screwdriver right in the box, which is all you need to upgrade and remove components. You can obviously open up the laptop with one hand. There's a little bit of wobble when you open it up. It's not crazy bad, but you will notice it when you open up this device. The black bezel around the display is, is magnetic. So like if I was to take this off, which I'm not gonna do yet, okay, maybe I will, this comes off and that allows you to replace and upgrade the display down the road. If you don't like this black bezel, Framework is going to offer different types of bezels that you can place around this laptop. So it really allows you to kind of configure it to whatever you want, which I think is super duper cool. The other cool thing is that this camera is actually a 1080p webcam. So you're not getting some crappy 720p webcam that you've seen on most other laptops. The display, it's not 16 by 10, but it's three by two. So you get way more vertical space than 16 by 10. If you've ever used a Surface laptop or a Surface book, that's the kind of aspect ratio that you're gonna get with the framework. This keyboard, very comfortable to type on. The travel distance is nice and extensive and it feels very good underneath my fingers. There's not a lot of keyboard flex, maybe a tiny bit in the middle, but overall it feels super solid. You have a massive touchpad and, and my first impressions of it so far feels the very good accuracy. Like I don't find that this touchpad is having any issues detecting my fingers. It is made out of glass and it is using Windows Precision drivers, so I don't expect anything to be incorrect there. Now, the cool thing is I wanna start placing some modules inside of here because I think that's absolutely awesome. Now, we do need a USB Type-C expansion card or module, whatever you wanna call it, because we have to power the laptop since the power brick is using USB Type-C. The other thing I'm gonna go for is more storage space because quite frankly, the more storage space 
the better. I believe there's already a 512 or 256 drive inside of here. So having an extra 256 gigabytes is gonna be kind of nice. Besides that, I don't, I don't know if, I don't think I'm gonna go for an HDMI port. Definitely gonna do a display port and I'm gonna go for a USB port. So you just simply rip off the pull tab, you take it out, this falls out, put it in, boom, you have a new port. Today I wanna use a USB port, maybe tomorrow I don't. Maybe tomorrow I need an HDMI. I can just keep those in my bag and then use it if I ever come across a situation where I wanna connect this laptop to an external display. Now unfortunately the expansion card is not an SD card, it's only micro SD. I don't think there's enough space for an SD card or maybe it's something they offer and they didn't send out. But either way you can use more expandable storage with the micro SD card slot. So that's what it looks like with everything in. It, you know, it pretty much comes flush with the rest of the body. You do see some gaps between uh, where you inserted it, but that's pretty standard for a modular design. But overall, I just find this to be super duper cool. I finally got the laptop set up and the first thing I noticed is that the power button over here also acts as a fingerprint scanner. That's a good thing because this laptop doesn't have Windows Hello facial recognition to log you in. If you're wondering what these little switches are, one of them blocks the webcam and the other one mutes the microphone. It is a 1080p webcam, so the quality is going to be better than a 720p. And the reason why they didn't put a Windows Hello facial recognition camera in here is because they said it would hurt the quality of the webcam itself. The display, it's three by two, so a lot more vertical space than you would get on 16 by 10 or 16 by nine. If you've used a Surface laptop or a Surface book, you know exactly what this is gonna feel like. The display is not touch, it is 2256 by 1504, and there's tons of reflection. I mean, a lot of reflection. Hopefully there's an option in the future that allows you to configure this with a matte display instead, because I know some of you out there can't stand reflection at all. I also just wanna stress this again, this keyboard is so good. Like one of the better keyboards on an Ultrabook that I reviewed this year, and the accuracy of moving this mouse around is fantastic too. Now, I wanted to check to see if these ports installed okay, and as you can see here, the USB disk, which is the 256 gigabyte expansion drive I installed, is working as intended. I didn't have to do anything. It automatically worked the second I loaded up this laptop. Now getting inside is really easy. You just loosen up the five screws on the bottom lid. Don't try to take these screws out. They do not come out. They just loosen up and they hang there. This is great because you can't lose them. And for someone like me, who's the biggest klutz in the world, that's a good thing. Now don't try to open the bottom lid. That's not how you get in. What you wanna do is flip it back around, open up the display, and then take your finger, you don't need anything else, place it right at the back of the keyboard and just lift it up. It is based on magnets, so it comes out super easy and placing it back is also very easy. Now when you take off the keyboard, there is a cable that attaches the actual laptop to the touchpad. There's tons of slack, so technically you don't even need to remove it, which is good, but if you want to, you can by just gently removing the cable from the back over here. This is a pretty thick cable, like they actually used a very good quality cable, so it's gonna be tough to rip, but you can rip it. Now this is what I love, the attention to detail. Like look at all the components. They're all removable with the same screwdriver that came in the box. There's QR codes on everything explaining how to fix these things or upgrade these things. If I was to take my phone right now and place it over one of these QR codes, a little browser option pops up and it gives me instructions on how to work with the different components that are inside of here. You have two slots for RAM. In fact, this is actually rank eight memory. This is the good stuff. This can be swapped out for more. You have a replaceable heat sink and fan. Like this is basically two pipes and a fan, which is cooling one CPU. Based on the way this laptop set up, there's obviously not room for a dedicated GPU just because everything has to be so close together. You do have your swappable NVMe SSD at the bottom. It looks like we have another space for one over here. We have two two watt speakers, one on opposite ends. This is a 56 watt hour battery. And then of course you have different explanations for where the actual modules 
go inside. Honestly, this is absolutely crazy. If you look close enough, you can see all the screws you have to remove if you wanna take the main board out. And there's even a swappable Wi-Fi card on the bottom right-hand corner. Honestly, this is some really cool stuff. The only downfall to this is right now they're just using Intel CPUs. I don't know if there's gonna be an option where you can like order a main board that can house an AMD CPU. I imagine a lot of people would love to have the Ryzen 5000 or upcoming 6000U series inside of this laptop. You just get more cores to work with and depending on your workflow, it might pertain better to you. What I do really wanna see is a gaming laptop like this. Like an Ultrabook is cool, but I feel like a gaming laptop they tend not to last as long because games get more advanced, they require more processing power, whereas Ultrabooks are, are more towards productivity and their shelf life is a lot longer than a gaming laptop. Look, this stuff is super exciting. I'm crossing my fingers that this company survives or maybe another company buys them up and, and they continue to do this kind of stuff because they were able to do it in a form factor that's so thin and, and it just shows the world that you don't need to make everything soldered on. You can still have an upgradable experience in a device that looks like this. And to me, that's insanely special. Now I'm gonna be reviewing this in terms of performance and what it can do and the color accuracy of the display on my main channel. So if you're interested in checking that out, you might wanna head over there. But if you have questions for that review, make sure to drop them in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer them. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.